Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna be apparently talking about the world's first magnetic variable ND filter. So a while back, Freewell and I worked together on their new ND filter for the DJI uh, FPV drone. Shortly after that video came out, they reached back out and it was like, hey, you know, this summer we're coming out with this new uh, variable ND filter system. Do you want to take a peek at it and help us launch it? Of course, I agreed. I do want to say this video is not sponsored or, you know, there was no money exchanged or anything. They just sent this out to me early and that way I can share my opinions on launch day for you all. So first, let's talk about what comes in the box. Installation instructions, you don't need that because you're watching this video. So it comes in this very nice case. It's like a semi hard case, see some flex in it. If you drop it, you throw it around, you're gonna to be totally fine. But if you ran it over with your car, probably not so much. And then when you open it up, you can see the filter system itself. And technically uh, it does come with a bunch of different slots. So if you have a bunch of filters, you have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five five different slots to uh, put different filters in. So let's talk about this filter system and what makes it different. Basically this entire system is magnetic as the name suggests. So the first piece is actually just the cap semi-transparent uh, just logo. This was your variable ND on your lens. You can just slap that and the magnets are really strong. That's not shaking off at all. The first thing you need to look at is the base and that is the one with the red line all the way around. In here you have uh, what's called the VND base. You know this may be a little easier attaching it to a lens and so for today's video we're going to be using my Pocket 6K setup since my Pocket 6K Pro has built-in internal NDs. Now at the time of this recording, uh, they only had a couple different filter sizes to send out to us reviewers. So I got the 82 millimeter and this is a 86 millimeter lens. So I do have a step up ring, which Freewell is going to be selling as well. So you can check out all the filter sizes and step up, step down rings in the description down below. So I'm gonna take the base and I'm just going to attach it. All right, so now that we have the base on, you can tell that there's actually a piece of glass showing up here. And this is actually a one-stop ND. In here, there's a little groove that I can put my finger that you can take out if you don't want this one stop. We're gonna talk more about that in a minute. Um, but now we just literally have the magnetic kind of base in there. Just line it with the uh, little logo groove thing and it slaps back in there magnetically. And then you have a two to five stop and a six to nine stop variable ND. Now the new trend that I really like about this is these are hard stops. So I've had variable NDs that I've used in the past that are just full endless rotation and you get crazy, crazy color shift with that and you never really know what stop you're at, which is really frustrating. So the fact that this is a hard stop is really nice. And to install it, of course, it's magnetic. But what you wanna do is line up, uh, there's a capital A here and a capital A on the base. And that's going to line it up perfectly. You're gonna see that it sits perfectly. And now we can see the numbered uh, grooves here that I can slide and go two stop, three stop, four stop, five stop. And we have that hard stop in there, which is really nice. If I wanted to change to the six to nine stop, I don't have to unscrew anything. I just literally take it off and put this one on it magnetically. And again, the magnets, super strong. Now, some possible cons or at least things to know about is once you have filters on it, they do not have threaded fronts, so you cannot add other different types of filters or matte boxes in front of it. They did this so that you don't have any vignetting issues, as well as the base itself does not have uh, any threads as well. But there's another trick up these ND filter sleeve. If you notice on one of the size, it says two to five or six to nine stops, but if I flip it over, it actually says CPL. And on the six to nine, it actually says ND32 CPL. So not only do you get a variable ND filter, but you get a awesome CPL. Now to do this, you need to take out the one stop base and then you pick whichever uh, CPL one you want. So maybe we're in more low light, so I don't need ND. So I'm gonna flip it over so that CPL is facing out and I'm going to attach this. And now instead of hard stops, you have a full 360 rotation. So that way you can use it like a normal CPL filter uh, and 
you know, do away with reflections and things like that. And again, if you want VND back, simply just flip it over, align the capital A's, and you're back at your two to five stops. Now hold up, just like a good infomercial commercial, there's more. So they included one more thing in uh, the system here, and it's back in this case. Now this is a mist base. Now I'm a fan of, uh, you know, the pro mist look as a uh, people call it. And so we can see here at the bottom, it says Mist VND Base. And so now what you do is replace the one stop uh, ND base with this uh, Mist one. So now we have the Mist base. Of course, if you're in a low light environment, you can just straight up use this and get that nice halation uh, and glow. Or of course you can add your NDs on top. But this wouldn't be a proper filmmaking gear uh, video if I basically just sounded like an infomercial the whole time, right? So it's time to go outside and do some tests. We wanna look for any vignetting issues, any major color shifts. Now at the time of this recording, I don't have the price of this, but if you're seeing this video, it's now live, so you can check it out in the link in the description. But I have a feeling it's not gonna be the most expensive uh, NDs on the market. And anytime you have variable ND, you have multiple pieces of glass shifting, there is definitely gonna be some color shift is my guess, but we'll see how bad. So let's go out and run some real world scenario tests. This is no ND filter at all. I put in the VND base, cicadas everywhere. So this is what the base looks like. Then I'm gonna add the two to five stop. Sorry, my eyes are squinting. I cannot look in the daylight. All right, so that's all the way up five stops. It's looking good on the monitor. It's Cicada Warfare out here. This is six stops. There's nine stops. Obviously that's too dark, but on the monitor I'm not seeing any noticeable tint. But we'll have to see. Again, here's nine stops. Six is looking really nice. The light keeps changing, so let's take off everything. So that's six. And this is just the camera by itself. It's compensated for aperture. So this is at T22. All right, I'm done with outside, done with these cicadas. Let's go back inside, I'm done. All right, and here's a couple simple examples of the CPL filters. It's always handy to have a good CPL filter on hand just to get glares and reflections out of glass and frames and whatever else. And so these worked really well, nothing groundbreaking here, just some really solid CPL filters. And finally, I tested out the mist filters and you'll see me talking here, but the audio was trash because it was just the scratch audio from the camera. Basically, I just used the VND base uh, mist, so I didn't add on any of the variable NDs or CPLs or anything, so just the base itself. And I actually compared it to my Dream Effects filter, which is in this little map box. Now both are decently strong, I would say, in terms of promise, since that's what everyone compares to. They're probably the equivalent strength to like a one half promise filter. So it's pretty strong, pretty stylized, but I like the look in certain scenarios. I think it looks good. And since the base is so close to the lens, when I held up a light directly to it, you didn't get any reflections from the lens or the map box itself, which is an issue I run into constantly if I'm shooting into the light source with this. There's so much space between the front of the filter and the start of the lens back here, that light kind of goes into the matte box, scatters around, and you can actually see the circular outline of the front of the lens, and it's ruined so many shots. So I really like the fact that I can use this uh, mist filter and not have it uh, you know, show the lens front when shooting into the light source or anything. So for me, that is a huge plus. All in all, I think this is a really solid system. I'm curious to know what you guys think. It definitely felt like uh, it was adding a little bit of magenta, but it honestly seemed even more natural or at least 
more pleasing than the stock footage straight out of camera. When I went up to nine, obviously that's when it was its strongest, but on a bright sunny day, that six stops looks really nice with my 15 millimeter wide open at 2.8. But I'm curious, what do you guys think about these filters? Let me know down in the comments below. Again, if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, the links will be in the description. Thanks to Freewell for sending it out my way early on. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.